Hello viewers. In today's video, I am going to demonstrate how to manage and administer RMAT backups using Oracle Enterprise Manager. In fact, this will be a small series of three videos. And in the first part, I will show how to schedule a backup. In the second part, I will show how to validate the restorability and consistency of the backups. And in the third part, I will show how to create a consolidated report on restore validation using BI Publisher report that comes free with Oracle Enterprise Manager. As a DBA, you already know the importance of taking regular backups of your databases. It is equally important to validate your backups and their restorability to add extra confidence that your backups are consistent. Especially when your database environment has hundreds and thousands of databases, it is not easy to validate the backups for each of them manually and you must rely on some kind of automation to do the validation for you. So first, let's log into our OEM system and set up the backups. I will use sysman user here. You can use any user who has administrative access to your OEM system. And then we will go to our candidate database. Next, we have to find out the candidate database. Go to all targets, sort by target types. We have one database here called CatDB, which will be our candidate database. Please remember that to set up the backups, the database must be, uh, the candidate database must be a target database which is monitored by your OEM system. Step number two, the normal name credential for the database and the database host must be created and set as preferred credentials for the database target. The host credential may be set up using Oracle software owner, that is the Oracle user itself, or any non-privileged user who has sudo access to the Oracle user. Now our candidate database is CatDB and this is the home page of the database. Now we'll go to set up the named credentials for this database. Go to setup, security, name credentials. We have three credentials already set up here. The one with the user sys, which, which will be used as a privileged database credential. The second one as using system, which will be for normal database credential. And the third one is the database host credential that is created using the Oracle user. If you want to know more on how to create and use OEM named credentials, please watch my video on that with the title, how to create and use named credentials in OEM 13C to automate database and OS jobs. I am also mentioning the link to that video in the description of this video below. Now we'll associate these named credentials with our candidate database target. To do that, we'll go to setup again, security, preferred credentials. We'll select database instance, click on manage preferred credentials. We have only one database here and that is selected in the target preferred credentials for this database catdb the normal database credentials will be set using the name credential that we created with the system user so nc catdb system will test and save and it has been successfully tested and saved now for sysdba database credentials will set nc catdb sys because we have only one credential created that's why in this list we'll see only one item and we'll test and save it for the host credential for the database host again we'll click on set and we have only one name credential created for the host that is nc oracle global We'll select this and test and save. 
Now all our named credential association has been completed for this target database CatDB. Please note that we do not need to set the CSDBA database credential or the, or the privileged database credential to set up the RMN backup jobs. This is not mandatory. Now once our preferred named credential associations are completed, we'll go for the backup settings. Step number three, we'll configure the backup settings and policies. You must log in as sys user to access Armen parameters, the backup policies and settings. To do that, again, we'll go to our candidate database. Let's go to the home page of the database. From there, click availability, backup and recovery. Go to backup settings. Please note that it did not ask for validating our credentials. As we already set up the privileged database credential as sys user and also used the name credential we created for the sys user as the preferred credential for the database it will not ask us to provide the password username and password again when we access the armen parameters now in this backup settings page we will have all the options to set up our backup the parallelism will use one for example the second option is for providing the disk backup location if you have already set up the FRA that you don't have to provide any specific backup locations here it will automatically take the FRA location for backup pieces as the targets for storing the backups and we'll use the compressed backup set here to save space tape settings as we are using a disk backup we are not going to use any settings in the tape settings part but if you are using tape backups then you have to provide the information here oracle secure backup domain we are not using oracle secure backup so we are not configuring anything here and media management settings if you are setting up the backups as tape backups then you have to provide the media manager related settings in this box here now host credential settings as we already set up the preferred credential for this database target we don't have to provide anything here all we just need to select the preferred method here and the oracle user and the password that comes from the name credential that we set up there will automatically come next go to the backup set maximum backup piece file size we will not provide anything here so it will automatically take the operating system level backup piece sizes snapshot control file in here it will automatically take the default location now the compression algorithm will be basic we'll check the optimize for load checkbox here we'll leave the tape settings as it is anyway we are not using tape backups here host credentials it has already taken now go to the policy tab backup policy automatically backup the control file and the parameters it must be on optimize the whole database backup we will not enable the block change tracking here at this moment the BCT is something which will keep track of the change blocks and it, it will even optimize your backup sizes by discarding the unchanged blocks. We will not exclude any table spaces from this backup. And the retention policy will be 31 days. Our archive log deletion policy will be delete the archive logs after they have been successfully backup one time. Again, host credential, we don't have to provide anything. It has already taken that setting. Now, once all these settings are selected, click apply. And your settings have been applied for the database target, that is CatDB. Step number four is to schedule the backup. To schedule the backup, we'll again go to availability, backups, 
and recovery schedule backup. For our example settings, we will use a whole database backup. We have all the options here to backup the whole database or table space, data files, archive logs, etc. And the preferred credential as we set already, we don't have to specify anything here. Now we'll schedule a customized backup so that we have the options to make changes. It will be a full backup and also we'll use this backup as a base of incremental backup strategy and backup mode will be online backup we will not bring down the database to take a backup in the advanced section it will also backup all the archive logs on the disk and it will delete all the archive logs from the disk after they have been successfully backed up. It will also check obsolete backups. We will leave the third option blank as we are not using any, any media manager software to perform the backup. Click next. As we are selecting a disk backup, the FRA location has been automatically selected our backups are going to this location click next now in the scheduling part we have a couple of options here whether it's going to be a one-time backup or a repeating backup if we take a repeating backup then we have the options to select here like at what frequency this backup will run it's uh, by minute by hours days weeks weekly monthly yearly etc so if we schedule it weekly then we have also the options to select on which days of the week this backup will run you can customize these options as per your requirements for our example backup we will run only one time backup which will run immediately once we submit the job. Click next to go to the review page. So our database target is the CatDB. Backup strategy, backup strategy is customized backup. Whole database. Destination is disk. Backup type will be an incremental level zero backup. Online backup. The location will be our FRA and this is the backup script that it is going to use backup incremental level 0 cumulative device type disk tag and all the arm and things and once you are satisfied with the settings submit the job the job has been successfully submitted to view the job details click on view job we will set it to auto refresh every 15 seconds and we will wait for the page to be refreshed. Our candidate database is a very small database so it will not take a long time to complete the backup job. Still in the running status. and our backup job has been successfully completed as we can see the status as succeeded and once the backup job is done you can check the details of the backup job in the report section to do that go to availability backups backup reports we'll order the backups by their start time so that the latest one will come at the top and this is our backup job that has just completed once we select it it will give us the details about the backup pieces and the backup sets so the backup sets if we click on the backup sets it will give the details of the backup sets created and the backup pieces similarly if we click on the backup pieces it will give the details of the backup pieces created and in the inputs tab 
we'll see what are the input files see the data files archive log files control files which were taken as input for the backup if you click on the archive log for example you will see that there are three archive logs backed up and included in this backup set control file it has one control file which has the max and the minimum SCN and this is how we completed our backup using OEM so DBS I hope you enjoyed the first part of this video in the second part I will show how to automate the restore validation of the backups using OEM if you liked my video and found it useful please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss similar videos that I am uploading every week for the Oracle DBS.